This is Culture Communication and Brand Moments with Shelby Joe Long, the show that takes you around the world to share interviews with some of the most successful and relevant people on the planet, hear their stories, and get the most important business lessons they have learned on their road to success, and get exclusive advice on how to implement their success into your life and business. Culture Communication and Brand Moments is brought to you by the Strategic Advisor Board and your host, Shelby Joe Long. Hi, everyone. I'm Shelby Jo Long. Welcome to the podcast. I am the CEO of Business Dynamics and the Strategic Advisor Board Vice President. My name is Shelby Jo Long, and I'm here today to interview another genius entrepreneur to encourage you to think about your genius space and to think about the possibilities in the marketplace in a different way. Today, I have the opportunity to engage with an interview with a local business professional business consultant, leadership coach, local being Billings, Montana. We're both in Billings, Montana. We have some exciting things coming up, and we're going to talk about that later on the podcast. But I want to give Karen an opportunity to introduce her business and tell us her story. So I'm happy and excited to introduce Karen Gross of Canvas Creek Team Building and author of Quiet Leadership. And I imagine that we're going to hear quite a bit about those two ventures because that's her business. That's her lifestyle. So anyway, Karen, I am happy that you are here to join us on the podcast today. Welcome. Well, thank you, Shelby Joe. I'm just such a fan of everything you do. It's a privilege to be here. Uh, thank you. And likewise, there's. Uh, mm-hmm. it's funny. We work in the same town. We work in a very similar space, but now we're We're starting to figure out how those things collaborate together so we can make a bigger impact. But I want to learn more about you and your business because that's you've made such a big imprint already with your business and published author multiple times. So let's hear about your business. Can you introduce that to us? Oh my gosh, always my privilege. This is, of course, my favorite thing to talk about. (laughs) So, right. (laughs) So I'm a very creative person and a person who loves people and numbers and business and all of those things. I'm not, uh, I've never really figured out how to niche my ideas. And 12 years ago, I decided I was going to live my dream and become an insurance agent. That had been my dream my whole life. Isn't that just, you know, the dream? And shall I don't see that in your wheelhouse, but I get it. <laughs> right. I just thought that's what I should do. And I was wrong because once I started, what I wanted to do was coach the other agents. And right. And so I had to step back and in a moment of desperation, actually, because I'd left a fancy corporate job, I, um, I said, gosh, what am I supposed to do? And that's when I was inspired with the concept for Canvas Creek team building. Great. Uh, tell tell us more about that. That I mean, it's it's interesting because you almost weren't from a point of despair because that's sometimes when you hear the entrepreneur journey begins. But you were just not fulfilled and you wanted something else. So yeah, yeah exactly right. I had a great job, but I was like, oh, I was just done with it. And yeah. so in this moment of despair of what am I supposed to be doing and what's it supposed to look like? Um, I thought, gosh, what if I had people paint together? And uh, I started looking around YouTube and Google and there was nothing that was what I was thinking except some Tunisian art rules that I found and a video of some artists who had tried this out in New York. And there were like 18 views on that video but that video just blew my mind I'm like oh my gosh that's what I'm looking for and so right do have you had that moment where you're like oh gosh here we go yep and when it just hits it's like a light bulb and you're like that's what I need that's what the connection I'm looking for absolutely yeah exactly right I'm sure so many of your listeners have had that exact same thing happen or I hope they have if they haven't it'll happen for them they just you know have to be ready Right. So um, I, everybody I could find, I'm like, watch this video, watch this video. And they didn't get it. But on, so that was a Tuesday night. On Thursday night, I tested the concept with my family through a canvas and some paints in the dining room, uh, put the grandchild to bed, got everybody a little bit of food. And uh, we created art together. And at the end of it, everybody was really excited, like, oh my gosh, this is your next thing. And 
then after, as we were almost done talking, we went to the back of the canvas and the back of the canvas displayed every place we'd been in that process, started the whole conversation again. We're just so excited. Uh, so we decided Saturday, we would pull a bunch of friends together and do a test. And at that test, Shelby Joe, people were so excited and so alive that I booked my first event for the following Tuesday. So in one week, I went from concept to business making money. It was incredible. And that's how I knew I was doing the right thing. Absolutely. Things just kind of fell into place, but they fell into place because you put yourself in that place. You know, it's, I, I think that's a, that's a challenge. At least that I feel that a lot of entrepreneurs, they, they might be scared or they might not have the mindset. They don't try their ideas because sometimes you're not always going to succeed. You're not always going to succeed when you put your new idea out there, but then when it clicks, it clicks. And that means it's right and it's right to move forward with that. So that's awesome. Tell me a little bit more about the process. What happens when people create art together? Okay. Um, and then I have to tell you a story from quiet leadership about being scared. It's going to be perfect, but let me tell you the process. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> So, so first off, people walk into the room, bankers, lawyers, accountants, uh, and, you know, people who work in the service industry, and they always have the same look on their face, the same look of, what the hell? And, yeah. and I don't want to do this. And they're not excited. Most of them don't like team building. Uh, art is completely out of their wheelhouse. And so we, everybody dons some smocks, and pretty soon there's four people standing in front of a canvas, and I give them the rules of engagement and what this looks like. And they go through a process that is so scientific at this point that I have it timed. I know what a team will do at seven minutes. I know what the team will do at 13 minutes. And if they're not doing it, I know how to influence what's happening on their canvas, right? So at the end of the process, the team steps back, they look at their art and they elbow one another and they smile and all of a sudden they know it's done and they're so jazzed about the art they created. And that art might be beautiful, like the piece of art behind me that was from our test phase, or it might be completely ugly, just a gray smear, but the team is always so very proud of what they created together. Sure. And they're really... Right. And the really cool thing is that they transfer that into work and know that, gosh, if they could create art out of this really miserable experience that they thought they were going to have, that they can do anything together. And they and so we usually spin out and set goals and do strategic planning with it. Yeah, that's a that's a powerful, transformative experience. And, and it, it also just involves everybody in the process and that you can produce something together. So that's a that sets their mindset into the fact that they can take that into business on their own. Yeah, that's uh, super interesting to know the process and to hear that you like can predict what happens with teams. And it does seem to, it, I'm also in the communication leadership business culture space. And it is true that there's, that it all delves down to a few critical concepts that tend to show up when we have human interaction in teams. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And if you're watching for it, which I think that's part of what happens here, you stop and you watch for it. And sometimes we identify new leaders, the quiet person that you've never paid attention to before, all of a sudden he has a really loud voice and a big opinion on the canvas. And they assume a leadership role. It's really um, it's fascinating to watch that, that transform transformation. Pardon me. <laughs> that's awesome. I think that is a great transition into your newly published book published this year called Quiet Leadership. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Because the, the leaders that are quiet that come out and show their, their expertise, I, I want to hear more about that. So tell us about that book. Great. Yeah, I'm so excited about this book. This is all of the lessons that I had been learning in life as a young person and as an adult and watching the world and seeing the moments when people like yourself, Shelby Joe, made a statement and everybody just kind of leaned in and they're like, oh, that's amazing. That's really, that's really insightful. And it can change how we do business and how we interact with the world. Absolutely. So I grabbed these stories and put them into three categories, leading yourself, leading your team and leading your community. And so often books don't touch leading your community. And I think that's so important. Very true. Very, it's critical to do that because you have to show that, show the outcome of your leadership skills within your community and bring that community together. 
Right. Absolutely right. And so the the idea behind quiet leadership is you don't have to raise your fist and you don't have to have a, a riot, but you can change the world with a whisper if you know how to do that correctly. So the, the plan here is that you don't have to have, you know, the old style leadership training where it's all training by rote and everybody is thinking the exact same, same thing about leadership. I really want people to trust themselves and to learn the lessons that they have in their hearts and in their world and bring those to the forefront, forefront, pardon me, and use those for their leadership. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm reminded of a conversation I have typically in my public speaking classes. I teach public speaking. People hate public speaking. Just generally, they just don't like it because it's it's uncomfortable. It's not what they want to do. It's They would rather like do this than like talk to an audience. But I talk about charisma and how charisma is not something we can necessarily define, but it's how you as a speaker connect to an audience, whether you're in a one-on-one -on -one situation or whether you're speaking to an audience. And we all have different elements of charisma. Some of us use our hands a lot more. Some of us use eye contact. Some of us use certain emotions or phrases and those connect with your audience. And, and I'm, it kind of feels like you're saying the same thing about leaders, that we have these different touch points and these different powers that we can then influence with others. Is that does that kind of resonate with what you're talking about? Yeah, it absolutely does. It, what happens when somebody really leans into quiet leadership is that they learn that just naturally, as a quiet leader, they tend to ask more than they tell. So they'll ask questions before they jump in and solve the problem, right? And the best leaders do that. And they generally will want to celebrate more than they correct which is really so amazing when you can just celebrate people. The more you celebrate the good things, the more of those good things you're going to see. Oh, and so, so important concepts that we don't right. talk about as like a leadership skill that you need, but the listening, the encouraging, the responsiveness of that, so important. Right. And then now what I think is so important in our post pandemic world is we're all figuring out how to lead out of crisis is the idea of acting more than you tell, um, acting more than you direct, actually. So that means that leaders now are expected to stand right beside their team and be in the trenches with them. And if you are acting, your team is going to be right there and follow along with you. They're just not interested in, this is how you do it. They want you to show them how to do it. Absolutely. That's awesome. I, uh, the, so many exciting things we could, we could stay in this, stay in this all day. I would talk about this kind of stuff all day, but I wanted to, I wanted to switch the conversation a little bit. And I wanted to ask about your influences as an entrepreneur. Yes, you were internally frustrated or not fulfilled and you wanted to find something that fed your skills. Were you influenced? Were you raised by entrepreneurs or did you have that in your space? What? How did you start thinking about making that transition into entrepreneurship? <laughs> That's a great question. So, <laughs> so I like to spend money. <laughs> and, <Me> right, <laughs> yeah. and as a nine-year-old, my family didn't have enough money to spend, but I wanted to go to camp. And my mom said to a nine-year-old, imagine this, of course, that was back in the day. But she said, you're, you're going to have to figure out a way to make that money. Well, I was too young to babysit. And so I started a paper route, took on a paper route. So at nine years old, I was figuring out how to sell papers, how to collect papers and do that. So um, that just kind of led me from one thing to the other. By the time I started Canvas Creek, I had... Um, started nine businesses oh, and right. yeah and all of them Serial successful entrepreneur <laughs> right yeah I couldn't do it just once and right. some of them I liked some of them I didn't and along the way I call it um, learning my next I learned how to speak in public I learned how to sell I learned how to train so that all of those things now come full circle so the number of influences holy cow <laughs> there's hundreds and that's what I talk about in my book what's next is just yeah. always looking for that next person and that next experience which I think entrepreneurs sometimes forget that um, that it takes a million cups of coffee before you figure out the concept right it takes some time and it takes patience and it takes putting it, putting your ideas out there and asking for that feedback for sure. 
that's a that's a that's been a challenge in my entrepreneurship journey for sure. So, yeah, tell us about what's next. So that that book you came out a couple of years ago. Tell us about that book. Yeah, so that book is all about living your journey, living the right thing that you are supposed to be doing. So I tell the story of how I was so shy, I couldn't talk to three people at once. And now I talk to, you know, stages of 10,000 people. And like you say, charisma is all about it. I have a very um, boisterous stage style, but I say um a lot. And most speakers would be like, oh, oh my God, never say um. People just like it because it's who I am. It's authentic. So what's next tells that journey. How did I become me and how can you become you? What goals should you set? How do you set those goals so that you really can achieve them? And how do you develop a board of directors who will hold you accountable to achieving them? So it just takes you on that whole journey of becoming an entrepreneur and living your next. Oh, it's great. So good to hear. As you talk about quiet, quiet leadership, it's important to set that example, tell those stories and show how you've done it so other people can do it too. And I think that's a great transition into, into this next piece that I want to talk about. And this very, it's, it is a defined program, but we haven't launched it yet. So I'm really excited to talk about it. Uh, we, I, as my audience likely knows, my book was just published called the, yeah. called I See Your Genius, Transform Your Idea into Income. And similar themes to what you talk about in your first book, but then in your second book with Quiet, Quiet Leadership, there's a lot of those integrated concepts to be able to make a bigger impact with the audience. And I'm excited about bringing our two ideas together so we can make a bigger impact. And we can talk about leadership on a fundamental level on your skills, but then how you execute it within your team, but then what that means for your community. So can you talk a little bit about that and a little bit about this process and this collaboration and why that's so important to leadership? Yeah, I love to collaborate. I always say that I'm never the smartest person in the room, but together we can be brilliant, right? And, and that's what you and I are going to do, Shelby Joe. We're going to jump in that room and um, talk to people about our ideas of leadership and walk them through a four quadrant process of becoming stronger leaders themselves, really tapping into their genius and figuring out who they want to be as leaders. So we, we I'm so excited about this day. We have um, a nice little plan of activities and thinking, moving around, sitting, so that there's a little bit of something for everybody at the exciting Billings Library. I love to use that community Absolutely. room. It's so beautiful. And then the really, the really cool part is where we're going next. So Shelby Joe, tell them what we do after we close the day. We are going to go do a book signing at a local bookstore. And it's really exciting to be able to engage those local pieces of the community so we can we can support those that, those members of the community and also support our own businesses and our own mission and bring the community together under the umbrella of a leadership conversation. And the leadership conversation can transform business lives. So I'm excited about that too. I'm I'm excited. I have I have always been the type of leader to look to other people and engage very, in a lot of different concepts and a lot of different ideas. There are a lot of themes that resonate in both of our perspectives and both of our books, but I'm excited to put them all under one umbrella and bring forth the idea of the genius of leadership when we get together in September. So I'm excited about that. Yeah, me too. It'll be, it'll be genius. It'll be genius. And uh, I uh, I will say this on the record. I believe it's going to lead into another book from the two of us. I believe it's going to lead into bigger things uh, and a way that we can access it and influence more people because it's such powerful ideas. And collaboration and partnerships are the way that we can move forward in the future as a leader. That's my That's my two cents on it. So. Absolutely agree with you. I'm 100% in. You got to collaborate to do great things. <laughs> and we will do, we'll do another podcast interview in a, in a couple of weeks once we have the details set and we'll introduce everything, introduce our major concepts, and then we'll uh, get all the details out about it. So Karen, uh, as we kind of wrap up the interview, is there any advice that you would give to people that are maybe thinking about starting a business, being an entrepreneur, 
taking a step out there. What's your what's your advice to them to take that step into the entrepreneurship world? Okay, so I'm so glad that you asked. I'm going to go back to a story that I thought of a few minutes ago. Um, it is a story from Quiet Leadership, Shelby Jo, and it talks about a young lady. Her name was Abby, and she was from Massachusetts, and she was visiting in California, and a friend said, hey, let's go for a hike. Abby was so scared because she'd never hiked, but she did it. And so she is out in the woods, they're hiking along, and Abby turned to the right, and she saw a whole field full of bears. And she's scared to death. And so she sits down. Now, in the book, I talk about my background dealing with bears. But Abby sits down and she just knows those bears are going to be the end of her life. And she can't move forward. She just sits there. And pretty soon her friend comes back and says, Abby, what are you doing? And she said, well, those bears are going to be the end of me, the, the end of us. And she's so frightened. And her friend said, Abby, those are just cows. <laughs> And so <laughs> to all of you who are thinking about being entrepreneurs, that's what I'm going to tell you. The thing that you're the most scared of, that you might not make money, that somebody might not uh, like your concept, whatever you're scared of, it is probably just a cow. And it's going to let you pass with just a move and a swish of its tail and you're going to be okay. It is not a bear. So go live your dream. Be an entrepreneur. It's going to make you feel genius. Oh, I love that. I love that story because that's all, that's all, it's all in your head, right? It's what you think is out there and what you think is your limitation. And it's really not your limitation. It's really something that you can walk right past. Just it's a cow. <laughs> I am not all the way through your book. I've started reading it. I'm into a couple stories and I'm excited to read the rest of it to listen, listen to your lessons about quiet leadership and how that makes a difference in my leadership style. So Karen, thank you again for coming to the podcast. Love having conversations with you. And uh, again, we could probably talk all day, but I look forward to the next time we're on a podcast to talk about the genius of leadership and how we're getting that up and going here in September. So, Sounds great. I'm excited about it. Me too. And I am excited to collaborate and to move forward and to make an influence with this discussion about leadership. I thank you all again for listening to these ideas about leadership and how it can help transform your business. And we will see you next time. Thanks for listening to Culture, Communication, and Brand Moments with your host, Shelby Jo Long. Please leave your feedback and visit strategicadvisorboard.com to get the latest and greatest business advisement on the planet. Follow us on social media for updates and we will see you on the next episode.